I'm actually shocked that it was this bad. Like, I haven't seen this picture for years and it's like, it's just so... <gasps> it was so bad! I got so self-conscious because of my skin that I just would refuse to be in photographs. I hated speaking to people up close. I just hated it. This is actually the only picture I have from that time because as soon as I saw a camera, I would just <laughs> turn away. That picture was taken seven years ago, but like since then I've actually had acne on and off. And I think in this seven years, I've learned a lot about what works for acne, what doesn't work for acne. I'm literally gonna talk about everything from diet to skincare to medications like antibiotics and Accutane to seeing a dermatologist, seeing a GP. I'll timestamp everything as well. If you do watch this video, I'm fairly confident that you will know how to fix your acne and how to best approach it. So let's get started. So I'm firstly gonna go through some points that are really important to know if you have acne. The first thing to understand is that acne is a medical issue and it is not a cosmetic one. It really took me a long time to understand this because I had always just thought that acne was like a cosmetic thing and that I was being vain and superficial for like worrying about my skin and feeling insecure about the way it looked. Acne is a diagnosis. If you have acne, you have a skin condition. That's not a bad thing. It just means that it can be treated by medicine and there is a branch of medicine that is dedicated to, to the skin. If you do have acne, I just want you to understand that what you have is not some like superficial, stupid teenage thing. Like it's actually your skin not functioning properly and it's your skin getting clogged and bacteria proliferating and loads of inflammation happening. Like that is not a normal process and therefore, there are medicines that we can give to treat it and there are doctors who can help you. So don't feel like you can't go to a doctor. Don't feel like they're gonna be mad at you. Any doctor, any good doctor would be very happy to see you and help you if you have acne. So yes, number one, acne is medical, not cosmetic. The second point is that please get help early. I think if I'd just gone a bit earlier, the whole process would have been accelerated. I would have had less scarring, less like, it would have been less of an ordeal. So please, if you have acne and you've already tried some things at home, which I'll talk about later as well, what you can use at home, but if nothing is working, just go to your doctor before it's, before it's been like five months. The next point is to be careful with your skincare because a lot of acne products and just a lot of skincare in general that you can get from the supermarket is really, really bad. For example, I was using this product, this Clearasil product, which is actually a really famous brand in the UK. Um, they had these rapid action pads that were supposed to either fight acne and they were so amazing. I would every day use this pad, this exfoliant pad, soaked in alcohol and fragrance and just scrub, scrub at my skin. <laughs> I'm about to cry, I can't believe I did that. But this is a really popular product and there's so many products like this and when you don't really know, you know what you're doing, it's very tempting to use products like this. So before you buy any skincare product, I would recommend going to this website called Inky Dakota and pasting the ingredients list in. This will then tell you if the ingredients are overall good ingredients or overall bad ingredients. Now this is obviously like a simplification, like some products that have irritating ingredients will be really good for some people. But I think in general, if a product is coming up with loads of red, irritating, bad ingredients, don't try it if you have acne. Your skin is already irritated, it's already inflamed, you don't wanna make it worse. Later on in the video, I will do a full skincare routine for, for acne, so keep watching if you, if you wanna know what products are good. Be careful using the internet. The internet is like this massive, massive heap of information. So there's lots of good information, but there's also lots of bad information. When I was searching for treatments for acne, when I was younger, there was a lot of stuff, you know, saying to use toothpaste on your acne, to use lemon juice on your acne, to use semen on your acne. That, honestly, that is recommended. So when you're using the internet, just be careful. Make sure you're using reliable resources. There's a lot of dermatologists on YouTube now, so their videos are a good source of information. Whenever you're reading a weird forum post or some dodgy skincare website, just be mindful that this might be poor quality information. The next one is to not pick or squeeze your face. Um, I think a lot of people actually like doing this. Some of my friends, they're all like, if they see a pimple on my face, this is actually really gross. They'll ask if they can pop it for me. Oh my God, that's really nasty. Don't pop your spots and don't get your friends to pop your spots. The thing with squeezing your spots is it makes me worry about scarring. And I know short term, if you squeeze a spot, it looks better. But in the long run, 
I think it probably ends up being worse if you're squeezing a lot. So don't squeeze. Also, when you squeeze, you might be spreading some nasty bacteria and pus and just stuff all over your face. So we don't want that either. It is honestly best to just leave them um, and let them run their own course. The next point is to appreciate diet, but to not obsess over it. So diet and acne is, is a topic that a lot of people disagree over, even dermatologists themselves. Some will say that it doesn't have an impact and others will say that it does. I think the research shows that there is evidence for like a lot of different types of food groups having an impact on acne and making it worse. So there's actually evidence for a lot of different food groups having an impact on acne. Um, the main ones are high GI foods, which are foods that raise your blood sugar quickly. So that's things like white rice, white bread, cakes, sweets, dried fruit. These types of things have been linked to worsening acne. Also, there is dairy that's been linked, chocolate, processed fast food. Generally, anything that is unhealthy, there's probably some data somewhere showing that it worsens acne. Now, you obviously have to take this with a pinch of salt because in these studies they give the people, they usually give the people that food every day um, for like weeks or months. My point is that there, there is some research that shows diet can worsen acne. That doesn't mean that you should suddenly become a vegan and cut everything out of your diet if you don't want to, but it's just saying that it's important to be aware of that and to pay attention to what food makes your acne worse. So for me, over the years, I have realized that dairy worsens my skin. Like, I wish it didn't, but dairy is just bad for me. Obviously, it can be a bit hard because you eat loads of things in one day and which one is making your skin worse. It can be hard to work out. But I think try and pay some attention to it and then assess the impacts on your skin. You will probably notice a pattern. And then if you want to, you can reduce the consumption of that food group or you can cut it out. For me, I did cut dairy out, but that's also because I'm lactose intolerant. So it was just like dairy and me do not mix very well. Diet is obviously something a bit difficult because you know, you don't want to like completely suck all the enjoyment out of your life just to have clear skin. But I think it's just a point worth mentioning that yes, you're not making it up. What you eat can actually impact your skin. But if you do change your diet, it's probably not going to cure your acne. And that is because acne is a very complex process. It has multiple aspects. So there's a genetic component. There's also the environmental component, which does include things like your diet, but it also includes things like how stressed you are or if you are washing your face properly or if you're changing your bed sheets. Even if you change all of your environmental things, if you still get acne, you just need to go to the doctor because at this point it is a genetic thing that needs to be targeted with medicine. If your genetics are just programming you to have overproduction of sebum and to just get acne, what you do with your body, what you eat is not gonna change that. And I think it's just important to recognize that sometimes acne is just out of your control. Okay, I'm joining you from the bathroom to talk about skincare. I'm on my tiptoes, so maybe I should find like a box to stand on. So with acne, there is this urge to really over cleanse your face and to scrub and to use a lot of acids and exfoliants. I really understand the urge because I used to have it as well, but I just wanted to treat my acne at every single step of my skincare routine. But I have really found that being more gentle with my skin really helps. And then just treating my acne with one product at one part of my skincare routine. For the ideal skincare routine, I think that you should start with a gentle cleanser. I really like the Vani Cream Cleanser. This will cleanse your skin, but it's gonna do it in a very gentle, soft way. I really prefer using that to using an abrasive, like very strong cleanser. But if you don't think that's gonna be strong enough for you, La Roche also does a couple of good cleansers, which I will put on screen now. I've tried both of those and those both work. When you have acne, your skin is already inflamed, it's already irritated. The last thing you wanna do is be using a cleanser that's very um, that's very abrasive, and then using a treatment with acid in, then using a moisturizer with acid in, and just using so many strong products. So I think it's better to, you know, take a step back. After cleansing, that is when I would use a treatment. I think if you have acne, the best bet is to start with benzoyl peroxide, either 2.5% or 5%. Benzoyl peroxide is an antimicrobial, so it's gonna help to kill the bacteria and therefore help to treat the acne. Use this on dry skin after you've cleansed your face and um, dried it patted it dry with a towel, and then just dot it on the areas that are affected. There are so many different acne treatments that you can get on the market, you know, niacinamide, AHAs, BHAs, benzoyl peroxide, azelaic acid, there's so many different things, and it can be very difficult figuring out what works for you. You can end up wasting a lot of time trying loads of products, loads of expensive products, and none of them really working for you, and maybe even making your skin worse. So I'd say if benzoyl peroxide, which is sort of a well-established treatment, if that doesn't work, don't waste your time if your acne is bad, go straight to the doctor. 
If you just have very mild acne, then yes, you can try acetic acid, you can try niacinamide, you can try AHAs, you can try BHAs, but if your skin is starting to get worse and you're worried about it, skip all that step, try skincare and just go to the doctor. The last thing to do is to use a moisturizer. I think that this moisturizer by La Roche is really, really good for acne. It is the Ethiclad Duo Anti-Imperfections Moisturizer. Honestly, whenever I stop using this moisturizer and try a different one, I gradually start to get spots. So, <laughs> this is just my Holy Grail moisturizer. I think maybe because of the niacinamide in it, it's, it's good for my acne. It is good for oily skin as well because it's quite lightweight. Um, so, Perfect moisturizer for acne prone skin. In the daytime, I would use a sun cream. This sun cream is really, really good. It's by The Altruist and it's SPF 50. It's very, very cheap. It doesn't have a noticeable white cast. I mean, I'm quite pale though, um, but I haven't noticed a cast with it. It also is not greasy, it's not sticky, it's not oily. It's just very nice and very elegant. So I'd really recommend that. Please use a sun cream because with acne, you're probably gonna have some hyperpigmentation and the sun is gonna make that worse. So using a sun cream will help to fade the hyperpigmentation faster. Really going back to basics and just cleansing, using a treatment, a moisturizer and a sun cream, I mean, that doesn't sound that basic, but that sort of core routine is really giving your skin the best chance to clear the acne. If you are investing loads of money in random products to try and cure your acne, please stop. It probably won't help. So for my own personal experience with medications and antibiotics and things, I started with topical benzoyl peroxide and topical antibiotics. Those sadly weren't working very well for me when I was younger. My acne was like super just aggressive and was just angry at the world. It wanted to take over my face and then take over the world. So nothing was working. I then had oral antibiotics, like two or three different types. None of those worked. I was just very unlucky. This is quite uncommon. Normally something would work. Because my acne was then resistant, I then got referred to dermatology and put on isotretinoin, which is also called Accutane. It's a very strong drug. It's sort of the last resort if you have acne, and it's also the most reliable. It has a very good sort of success rate at treating acne. It essentially works by inhibiting your sebum production. So you just don't get acne, the process is stopped. I've had two courses of it, so it's not perfect because if it was, I would have just had to have one course. With Accutane, the side effects I had were dry lips, nosebleeds, which I even had on camera one time. <laughs> and I also had quite a flushed face, which I didn't really realize at the time, but in retrospect, my face was very red. So would I want to be on Accutane again? Only if I really had to be. Um, it's not something that I would just do for fun. Like it's, it's a serious treatment and it's something that you will have to discuss with your dermatologist before they prescribe it to you. Do I think that it's a good option to consider if you have really bad acne or very resistant acne? Yes, I think it's a really good option to explore. I'm also on a topical retinoid, which I've been on since finishing Accutane and that helps to maintain my skin. Retinoids are another option to explore for acne, but again, this is something you should discuss with a doctor or a dermatologist because these are prescriptions. Um, but just to you know, be transparent, I am on a retinoid as well. So to summarize how I fixed my skin, I went to the doctor, I got medical help for my skin when it became a serious issue. I got put on Accutane twice and a topical retinoid. This is the main thing that fixed my skin. Without this, I would still have acne. So I'm not trying to sell you loads of products or tell you that I did a herbal juice cleanse to fix my skin. It was with medications mainly, but all the other things I talked about, like having a good skincare routine, just being mindful of your diet and going to get help if you need it. These are all other aspects to consider when you're trying to fix your skin. I've tried to make this video as comprehensive as possible, but I'm not trying to replace your medical provider. Um, just a disclaimer. I do hope though that you found some use in this and that maybe there's something that will be able to help you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!